It's at portal.ct.gov slash what's open outdoors. And we have real time updates that are available. It's your one stop shop to find out up to the minute information about when a park, um, when a beach has closed to capacity. And many municipalities are also posting capacity closure information um, on that website. So if you're thinking about coming to a beach, please check it, check what's open outdoors um, before you go to make sure that it's available. Um, please come early in the morning. Um, uh, in normal times, we would see uh, Hammond Asset closing at 9, 930. Uh, we expect that over this holiday weekend, we'll see this park closing and many of our other popular shoreline parks closing even earlier. Um, so, you know, but the good news is Hammond Asset is going to be here all summer. Uh, so if um, you're thinking about coming to the beach, it doesn't have to just be this weekend. Think about a weekday. Uh, think about another weekend through the summer. Uh, we're going to be here for you for your beach experience. Um, this weekend might be a time to try a different tradition like going hiking at one of our inland parks um, and, or thinking about uh, checking out a land trust. Um, getting outdoors is, is a really important thing to do, but we have 142 different state parks and forests that are available. So this might be a weekend to try something different and seek out one of those less traveled um, hidden gems. Uh, I also, as, as any park that you're, uh, you're coming to visit, of course, um, continue to keep up that new tradition of social distancing. So um, folks have been doing a great job. You know, even though you're outdoors at a park, um, bring your mask, wear your mask, uh, especially if you're in a, a parking lot, if you're um, uh, visiting our restrooms, which are open at, at our facilities. Um, we want to encourage people to wear your masks. That is one of the most effective things that people have been doing to help contain the spread of, of uh, coronavirus. Also maintaining six feet of distance as you're passing people on a trail um, or uh, when you're on the beach, uh, we're asking folks to maintain 15 feet of distance between blankets. That gives you um, six feet of distance and then a space in between for people who are passing by. Uh, those are just simple rules that people have been following. Uh, we want everyone to keep up the good work and maintain the progress that we've made over these last several months. Picnicking. Um, Fourth of July is a great time to get together and break out the barbecue. Uh, we are supporting picnicking at our parks. Um, pleased to say that our picnic tables, um, uh, as they're available, are open for folks to use. Uh, we are not uh, able to uh, uh, disinfect pic picnic tables in between uses, so we do encourage folks, if you're uh, thinking of having a picnic in the park, um, bring a tablecloth and bring disinfectant. Uh, those are just simple measures, precautions to keep you and your family safe. We also are encouraging folks, if you're thinking about having a picnic, um, come in small groups, come with members of your immediate household. If you are uh, recreating with folks that you don't live with, um, you know, encourage you to wear that mask and keep that six feet of space as you enjoy and celebrate a picnic uh, this 4th of July weekend and throughout the summer. Um, you know, another really important thing to share with folks, uh, we're, we're pleased to have lifeguards um, that are uh, in place at our shoreline parks. We know how uh, excited folks are to get in the water and swim. Um, we are also uh, looking forward to, um, you know, as uh, not just lifeguards, but many uh, uh, amenities and services that we're able to provide. Uh, we do that through um, the great work of our seasonal workforce, many folks who have joined us for the summer to be park rangers and maintainers and help keep our parks open um, and provide the services that everyone loves. And this summer, um, you know, I, it's a great time to uh, let people know that we are still hiring. Um, so we have many seasonal staff positions that are open uh, and we encourage folks, we have a one-stop website, workoutside.ct.gov, where you can find listings of many of the varied opportunities that we have available. So as our state is, you know, working to reopen our economy, we know many of folks are looking for opportunities. I can say as the deep commissioner, there's no better uh, uh, work experience than being able to be outside and help support the, our great parks and recreation opportunities for the public. So if you're thinking about um, a great employment opportunity, please check out workoutside.ct.gov to learn how you can be part of our outdoor recreation mission. Yesterday marked the soft launch of our camping season. Um, here at Hammond Asset, we have uh, a large number of campsites of really popular uh, camping location. And yesterday we, we opened for RV only. Uh, and next Wednesday we'll be uh, doing the full open of camping for RVs, for tents, campers. Um, we're really excited. Again,
again to be able to support uh, the reopening of camping, which we know is so important to many folks in our state. And as people, I know, are maybe um, uh, looking at uh, the resurgence in coronavirus that we've seen in other states, uh, it's a great time to remind folks of the, the wonderful tourism destinations and opportunities um, that we have right here in our state. We have a park within 15 minutes of every Connecticut citizen um, and many campgrounds around the state, not just here in the shoreline. Uh, so please uh, do check out our website to do an online reservation and think about spending your vacation um, uh, here in our great state and exploring these wonderful opportunities. Um, if you have any other questions uh, that folks have about um, visiting our park safely, please do check out our DEEP website where we have more detailed guidance. One thing that I do want to ask folks um, for your cooperation with is, uh, again, we the most important tool that we have to keep people safe and, and support social distancing as our parks is that we've limited parking capacity um, at many of our really popular parks so that we can keep the visitor numbers to a level that, that supports safe social distancing. And, um, of course, that means that our parks may be reaching capacity and closing more frequently. So if you get to a park and you see that it is closed, uh, please don't uh, engage in a debate um, with our staff um, about the closure. This is just a measure that we put in place to keep people safe. And absolutely, please do not park on a nearby road and try to walk in. Uh, we're asking for everyone's cooperation. It places a lot of stress on our nearby communities. So please work with us. Um, come back on a different day or a different time. Choose a different park. Check out Visit CT to find out some of the wonderful um, other opportunities that are there are around the state. Uh, we're just asking for folks not to park and walk in. And finally, it's a great weekend to get out on the water as well. Um, we're encouraging folks, and boating has been really a popular this year. Um, this weekend and this, uh, all weekends, uh, uh, all times, we just remind people to boat sober um, and always wear a life jacket when out, you're out on the water. But it's going to be a great weekend. Um, we're excited uh, to be supporting outdoor recreation and, uh, and uh, appreciate everyone's cooperation uh, so that we can help keep people connected to the outdoors and keep people safe during this challenging time. Thank you. Commissioner Dykes, thank you so much. And now we're going to hear from our acting public health commissioner, Deidre Gifford, who's going to talk about how you can keep safe this holiday weekend. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor. Good afternoon or good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be here on this stupendous day of weather. Um, Things are going well for us right now from a public health perspective in Connecticut, and that is due to a lot of hard work on the part of a lot of people, all of our uh, healthcare workers, all of our frontline workers, essential workers, and, and importantly, everyone who has been complying with the public health messages that you heard the Lieutenant Governor and Commissioner Dykes speak about. Um, I can't really do a better job than they've done uh, talking about the recommended public health measures. Um, but I did just want to very briefly touch on a couple of things and then I'll be here to take your questions if you have them. And that is, um, uh, if you are choosing to have a gathering this 4th of July weekend, not at one of our parks, um, what does the Connecticut guidance look like that's been so successful in keeping our numbers where they are? And that's just a reminder that in general, while the weather is beautiful like this, outdoor gatherings are safer than indoor gatherings. That's just a general rule. It's why we're encouraging outdoor dining and outdoor um, private events. If you're having um, a private event this weekend indoors, our guidance suggests it should be uh, no larger than 25 people. And we would encourage you to have, if you're having an indoor event, to keep that to, uh, to close family and um, take your events outdoors whenever possible. Our outdoor private event guidance is limited at 100 people. We strongly encourage you to keep those as small as possible again and wear your masks and keep your distance. Um, <clears throat> if you're eating or drinking, uh, obviously mask wearing isn't gonna be possible, but when you're not, put that mask back on and keep di uh, your distance from your, your friends and neighbors. Those simple steps are going to help us prevent an event where spreading might happen. And they are very simple, but they are also very effective. Um, and then finally, I would say for those of you who might be um, attending a municipal event or other uh, 4th of July gathering, those same uh, guidelines that Commissioner Dykes talked about in terms of wearing your mask, 
staying, uh, keeping your blanket 15 from uh, 15 feet from your neighbor, leaving a pathway where people can walk in between uh, social groups is really important. So those gatherings um, can uh, be a little bit larger, but it's important that we uh, keep our masks on and keep our distance at some of those celebrations. So I want to uh, take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy, healthy, and safe 4th of July weekend. And I'll be here later if you have additional questions. Commissioner, thank you so much. It's now my pleasure uh, to bring up someone who has been a fighter in our state legislature for our environment and for protecting and safeguarding our natural resources and our state parks. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce State Senator Christine Cohen. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and good morning, everyone. Uh, it's always wonderful to have uh, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and uh, the Commissioners here in the 12th Senate District, particularly this uh, picturesque town of Madison and this beautiful park. Uh, I know that everyone at DEEP uh, uh, has been working feverishly uh, to get us to be able to recreate in a safe and responsible way. Uh, throughout the pandemic and here we are going into a very very busy weekend uh, and we want to make sure that we keep all of those protocols in mind wearing our masks washing our hands keeping a social distance uh, where it's appropriate I was uh, thinking looking at these uh, folks on the beach you used to uh, get up from your towel and perhaps remember that you forgot your flip-flops when you left your towel uh, to perhaps use the restroom. Now you may remember that you forgot your mask back at your towel. So turn around, get your mask uh, before you use the facilities, before you come up to concessions, or whatever you need to do so that you can keep yourself safe as well as others. Um, you know, certainly we're going into a beautiful holiday weekend celebrating our nation's independence and we absolutely want to celebrate that Connecticut is doing very well uh, from a pandemic standpoint and we want to keep it that way. So anything that we can do, we all have a responsibility to do that. I do just want to uh, bring up something that we haven't touched on and that's small businesses because I have a small business here in uh, Madison and I know how much we rely on this heavy ham and acid traffic all the time. Small businesses truly are the backbone, the engine of our economy, and we want to do everything we can to bring our businesses back from the brink. Many were shut down. Many are still not seeing their bottom lines rebound, of course, and we want to do everything that we can. So I just wanted to um, put out some reminders. Uh, while it's going to take time to get things back to pre-COVID levels for these businesses, we can remember to go to our local stores, buy a book, buy sunglasses, buy your beach totes, buy a gift for a friend, go to your local eateries and uh, support them, enjoy a meal out. Make sure you wear your masks and wash your hands and socially distance. Follow the safety protocols that are so important to these businesses. And if you arrive at a business without following protocol, please know that it impacts negatively on them and in turn impacts negatively on us all. We need our re economy to rebound. We need these businesses doing well and we need them to be successful. Be patient with our small businesses. They're doing their very best that they can within the confines of these very, very important safety guidelines on what is sure to be a very busy weekend. Recognize that businesses can't always control others, so if you see something amiss, kindly and politely let management know. But most importantly, enjoy this holiday weekend. Happy birthday, America. Senator Cohn, thank you so much. She didn't mention this, but I'm going to give um, Cohn's Bagels uh, a big shout out. If you haven't uh, had them yet, uh, you should definitely uh, try. They're delicious. All right. It is now my pleasure to bring up um, the state representative for this beautiful beach and district, uh, State Representative Noreen Kokoruda. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much. Well, I want to start off by saying welcome to Madison. I'm one of the lucky people. I live a half a mile away. And when it's low tide, I can actually walk here through the water. I think it's illegal, so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> um, you know, the town of Madison is so blessed, and they know it, that this beautiful park, it's the largest of all the, uh, of all the parks, this beautiful park happens to be in our town. And when the summer is over, that's when you see even more Madison people here using all the incredible facilities, the beautiful trails, makes um, point, the nature center. Um, so we don't take it for granted, it's pretty special. Um, I just wanna say that last March, could any of us have imagined we'd be standing here with all these people at the beach? And I wanna give a special shout out to our governor and to our lieutenant governor and everyone that was involved really for taking the hard line of safety. I know you weren't always popular with that, um, I'm sure, but you know what, you was the right thing. And I think we wouldn't be here today enjoying this if you hadn't really, really put safety first and, and allow people in this state, and I think people are used to it. I, I notice every business I go into, you don't walk in the door without a mask. Businesses are working. We want to be open, and everyone's working together. I'm very proud of Connecticut, and Governor, that's been led by you. I thank you. And um, I just want to wish everyone a, a wonderful, wonderful holiday. It's going to be a great weekend, and um, I think a lot of things have been said today about guidelines and what to do, and I just want to encourage all that. So thank you, and, and happy Fourth of July. Thank you so much, Representative Kokoruda. Um, I want to acknowledge former first selectman and now uh, selectman from Madison, Al Goldberg. Can you wave, Al? Al is representing himself and uh, the first select woman, um, Peggy Lyons. So thank you for your leadership here and in keeping this beautiful uh, town so gorgeous. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce our great governor, Ned Lamont. Hey everybody, and Al and Noreen, and thank you for inviting me to beautiful Madison. Uh, Christine, yep, best bagels uh, east of the Mississippi. Make sure you take advantage. And I think you guys all got to agree, this sure beats one of those virtual press briefings in the Capitol oh, building. Sure. It's delightful to be here and uh, so happy we can be here at Hammond Asset. Hey, are, are my friends still over there? They run. Come over here and help me out and um, pull on my leg if I get boring. Don't pull too fast though. I just wanted to say um, we're here. Hammond Asset is open. Our parks are open. Our beaches are open. And if you look at the uh, front page of the Houston Chronicle, it says, uh, this July 4th weekend, stay home. Well, we're open because of each and every one of you uh, doing the right thing. And um, I don't want to bore you with the numbers, but I'll tell you, um, again, yesterday, we did 11,000 tests. That means 80,000 tests for the week. Uh, we have plenty of capacity, but sometimes you have to encourage people to get tested these days. That maybe they're not showing symptoms. They feel like we're out of the woods. I think they thought that maybe down in Arizona and Texas and Florida a couple months ago. It reminds you to be cautious. Uh, the testing, um, those that tested positive is less than 1%. It was 0.6%. So that's seven days in a row of less than 1%. And um, don't take that for granted because you've seen what's going on around the rest of the country. You see how that can change fast. But you also you can see the benefits of paying attention. I was just out walking in, um, you know, on the beautiful beach, and um, everybody was being appropriate. Everybody was keeping their distance and uh, making a difference. And as I was driving through here, I was sort of looking for license plates, seeing if there are any Florida plates or Arizona plates. We love you, but not this month, guys. <laughs> and um, we did a declare a quarantine uh, uh, about a week ago. Uh, from those states that are most infected, those states like Florida and Arizona and now California, where they have pockets that have an infection rate that's 10, 20, even 30 times more than Connecticut. And um, I, I, I wish you all the best. I hope you maintain the protocols like we have here in Connecticut. You can bend the curve a second time. Uh, I can tell you, talking to our airlines here, um, when we issued the um, the quarantine directive, um, 
the number of people making reservations coming up from, say, Florida and South Carolina went down about 20 percent. Number of cancellations went down. I don't say that with any great joy uh, because we have hotels and tourism, and I don't wish ill on anybody, but it's keeping our state, state much, much safer. Uh, our hotels are open for business. Uh, they're probably at 20 percent occupancy during the week, 50 percent on weekend, keeping that limited. We do welcome visitors to our state from the region. That's New York and Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Other states that, like us, have a positivity rate of, uh, you know, one percent, give or take. So we can do that safely. But broadly speaking, I say staycation. Stay close to home. You've got a ham and acid or something like this 15 minutes away, or as my security detail says, 10 minute drive away. And uh, so it's it's um, it's worth the visit and uh, taking advantage of our beautiful state. I'd like to leave you with one little message. Um, a friend of mine named Roland Cook, who is our Commissioner of Corrections, is heading back to Utah. And, uh, you know, it's a tough job, corrections, especially in the middle of a COVID crisis. And uh, there was a lot of critique, and there were a lot of lawsuits, and there were a lot of protests. And, um, Roland, I just want, this is from me, I, I wish you all the best. Um, we're going to miss you. And it's worth noting that Connecticut is uh, the first state in the country to reduce the number of people incarcerated by over 50 percent in the last uh, 10 years. 50 percent fewer people behind bars than there were before. And uh, nothing is absolutely safe, but I also got to tell you, we've tested everybody in our corrections facilities. We have one of the very lowest infection rates uh, anywhere uh, in the country when it comes to correctional facilities. And I read one of the um, advocates who were suing us and they said, well, maybe uh, Connecticut just got lucky. And I say to Roland, and I say to the folks at Corrections, and I say to the folks who are involved in health care at our correction facilities, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And it was your hard work that kept the, everybody safe um, in the corrections and throughout our state. And for that, I cannot be more thankful. And somebody's tugging on my pant leg, so I think. Uh, what's your name? Nate. Nate. You've come to the beach a lot? Yep. Me and my grandfather bike here a lot, too. Oh, boy. So you've lived here for a while. Your family has. Oh, yeah. You, you are family. very lucky. We live in Brantford, but... That's close enough. <laughs> What's your name? Grace. Hey, Grace. Thanks for being here. Anyway, um, that's all I got to say, except right. to say happy July 4th. We're, we're fortunate to be in this state in the situation we are right now. Enjoy it, enjoy it responsibly. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Nate. Bye, Grace. Thank you, Governor. Any questions? Yeah, one, uh, perhaps this is for the Commissioner and the Governor. Could you give us an idea when inland state parks uh, might be reopened to swimming again? I mean, that's, a, that's an issue that uh, I'm sure people are interested in this summer. Thank you. Thanks for that question. So. Um, that's right. So since Memorial Day, when we announced uh, we'd be starting swimming at the shoreline parks, we announced that we were not able to support uh, reopening of swimming at our inland parks. But I can tell you, uh, spent last week going out to visit some of the inland locations, um, really assessing uh, what we can do uh, to, to try to provide that um, later this summer. We're still evaluating that. We're, we're, we're consulting with uh, public health and, and other uh, experts. Um, the, the issue with the inland swimming is, is not that there is a risk of uh, transmission from swimming, but just that the size of those beaches um, at, uh, at those ponds and lakes is much smaller than what you see here along the shoreline. So with the 15 feet of distance between blankets, it becomes difficult for us to accommodate many visitors. But we're, we're looking at that. We're also, again, um, uh, you know, trying to evaluate what we can provide because we know how important um, those locations are for folks, especially as the weather warms. And we're hopeful that um, our efforts uh, to recruit more people um, to join us and uh, our seasonal workforce, um, that, that's going to be another element of this because uh, to be able to open uh, those locations for swimming, we also uh, need to, would need to have the adequate staffing um, to do that. So again, um, that workoutdoors.ct.gov website, I encourage people to check that out. And, uh, but we are working hard and hope to have some updates uh, on whether we'll be able to reopen those, those locations uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Hey, Governor. Okay. Yep. Right. So 
we have uh, environmental conservation officers. We're working closely with municipal uh, officials to help us uh, do support enforcement around our outdoor recreation uh, facilities across the state. We know that there are locations like Wadsworth uh, that are getting uh, tremendous pressure, a lot of use. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're working on that and trying to take action within you know, the, the numbers of folks that we have to do that. But we, we appreciate everyone's, uh, uh, you know, that's why we're trying to get the message out um, uh, about what people can expect and not expect. Uh, that inland swimming is not allowed at this time at, at our locations and working to do everything we can uh, to get compliance. Overall, people have been very understanding, but there are, there are exceptions and, and we're working to address them. Yeah, so Ken was asking about um, phase three, indoor dining, um, bars, uh, what comes next. Um, uh, yeah, this is an important weekend, not just for Connecticut, but I'm also looking around the rest of the country in terms of what the impact is. But I'm 100% with what Deirdre said. Most important thing I've learned is um, outdoors is much safer than indoors. You know, we thought a couple months ago, remember the virus was going to go away as, as soon as it got warm. And then we realized in places like Houston, it's bloody hot to be outside, so a lot of people are indoors there. And maybe the air conditioning is circulating, that's probably one of the things that's uh, causing a bit of a spike. So, yes, we're going to keep our uh, restaurants at 50% capacity indoors. More importantly, I urge you to go outdoors. I urge you to take that outdoor dining every ch opportunity you can. It's just much, much safer. And uh, Ken, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I think um, the bars are going to have to take a pause right now. I'm just uh, looking around the rest of the country, and I've seen it's pretty infectious in there. I've walked around out there, Paul. I've seen people are keeping the distance. As I told Ken, the difference between indoors and outdoors is dramatic. And I don't, I, I feel pretty confident. I feel very confident outdoors with the distancing, uh, people are safe. I was terrified about the protests. I thought, my God, a thousand people arm in arm. And you read right now that was outdoors and there doesn't seem to be a big spike related to that. It's more of those indoor type facilities where you see a lot of the spread, but Deirdre can add. Yeah, I would, I would add to that that, um, you know, exercise and uh, our, our mental health are also important parts of our uh, response and recovery. And so, I, you know, it is good. People feel good when they can go outside and walk around and experience nature's beauty like we're seeing here. That's very therapeutic. And so we, you know, I, social isolation is a concern as part of the response to uh, COVID. So when people can safely um, experience outdoor recreation, um, it's, a, it's a good thing to do to help us cope with what is likely to be a very long uh, pandemic in the United States. Well, what do you say to the people, both of you, what do you say to people who say that it, it's too soon to step in? Yeah, uh, the governor reminds me that th right now our numbers look excellent. And uh, that is because we have been maintaining these uh, very important, simple yet very important measures to keep one another safe. And uh, mask wearing is something we do for each other. Uh, I protect you when I wear a mask and you protect me when you wear a mask. And so doing that, washing our hands, uh, not doing parties uh, indoors uh, without masks. Those kinds of things can keep the numbers down. We've shown that in Connecticut, and we just need to keep the, the, uh, the pedal to the metal on all of those important um, efforts. Right. 
So the magic number is six. If you can't keep a distance of six feet uh, from you know uh, another person who's not someone you live with in your household group, then you need to have a mask on. So that's that's really the the guideline that we've been following um, throughout the spring and and the summer. Um, so we want to make sure that even though you're coming to a beach, coming to an outdoor recreation uh, location, if you're going for a hike, you're going to be in the middle of nowhere, do you need to wear a mask? You need to bring your mask because if you're in a circumstance where you can't maintain that six feet of distance, the mask needs to be on. And I'll just add on the beaches, you know, our beaches and our parks have been open throughout this pandemic. And so, you know, one of the things that I know people are going to encounter as they try to come to the park this weekend, for example, is that limited parking capacity where we really reduce the number of folks that we can accommodate. Um, that is helping us keep the numbers um, in, in, on the beaches to a level where it's easier for folks to maintain that distance. We know it's frustrating for people sometimes to come to a closed gate. Uh, that's why I encourage you to plan ahead. But that simple measure um, is enabling us to help people keep that distance. Commissioner, are the bathrooms open? Yes, ma'am. They are. Governor, can you provide a little more clarity what you said earlier about the bars might have to wait? Can you tell us about that? And when might you make an official decision? We have to make a decision on that. Um, I think it's July 6th or 7th. We generally, uh, for each stage, try to give people two weeks of preparation so they can uh, plan accordingly. Uh, so that'll be uh, in about a week. I'm just looking around the rest of the country. I see Texas, I see uh, Florida, I see um, Southern California, all closing down bars, and I'm learning from that. Governor, real quickly, uh, different topic. Can you address the reports of a uh, recent article about folks not being able to call into the office, uh, not being able to leave a message? There was a Connecticut News Junkie article. Do you have a response to that? Any changes? Uh, calling, calling into which office? Labor, my office? Yeah. Um, that surprises me because all those calls are call forwarding to our team that's supposed to be taking those calls at home. So let me look into that. Some folks weren't getting a message or some asking them for an email, but older folks might not use email. No, we're supposed to be there answering calls. That's really important to me. That's called uh, respecting the taxpayer. Governor, I had a question about the minimum wage. Next minimum wage increase due September 1st, I believe, from 11 to $12 an hour. Has there been any thought, I think on the books there's uh, some language that says that if there are two straight quarters of negative GDP that the Labor Commissioner can recommend a pause. Has there been a discussion regarding that? No, you know, there really hasn't. Um, we sort of made a deal with working families that they deserved uh, a raise and we're planning on a, about a dollar raise coming up, as you said, uh, this fall. Uh, I think we've have a new sense of what an essential worker is. It's not always correlated with how much you earn. And I think um, I'd like to make sure we can maintain that commitment. And for my buddy John Craven, who couldn't be here today, his question was, he said a lot of News 12 viewers are telling him that with regard to municipal tax bills, I guess there was a July 1st application deadline, and he said a lot of the viewers are telling him they didn't know about that. Is there a chance that that could be extended? For first, I think, first of all, I think it's July 15th. And okay. I think most municipalities have uh, put in place a process where you have an extra three months to uh, make those payments. But you've got to make the payments. You're going to have to make your rental payments. These are not things. A grace period gives you a longer period of time to do what you've got to do. And we've tried to do that with municipal taxes as well. Would you say that the thing that concerns you the most heading into this weekend is how many folks are coming in from those highly infected states with the high hospitalization rates? I think the answer to that is yes. I mean, look at the couple of folks went down to Florida, came back to Chappaqua, went to the graduation party, boom, flare up. So I joked before, I was pretty happy driving around not seeing a lot of uh, Florida and Arizona plays. Hey, thank you, everybody. Great being with you. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. Have a good weekend. Yeah, enjoy. And you too, man. Enjoy.